if you have ever taken a high school chemistry class, you have heard of potassium, okay? Just you know, periodic table, okay? Okay. Anyway, it falls under the class of electrolytes, and it actually is within the EMS scope. Typically, it's within the paramedic scope, but in some areas, it can fall within the advanced EMT scope of practice. Potassium is an electrolyte that is essential for nerve conduction, muscle contraction, keeping that acid-base balance within check, even normal function of the heart and the kidneys. So there are so many things in the body that depend on potassium staying at a normal level. With that being said, Said, potassium is not a typical medication that you're going to see stocked on an ambulance. If you do run into a patient that is receiving a potassium infusion, it is typically because they are on an interfacility transport, meaning they're being taken from one hospital or one facility to another facility. And the typical indication you're going to see for potassium is hypokalemia, which means the deficiency of potassium in the blood. And this could be for the treatment of hypokalemia, it's already been confirmed, or it could be for the prevention of hypokalemia. And your contraindications are going to be high potassium, right? We're not going to give potassium to somebody who already has high potassium. So any of the conditions associated with high potassium, like Crush syndrome, untreated Addison's disease, diabetic ketoacidosis, any of those conditions could cause high levels of potassium in the blood. As always, before we get into dosages, make sure you're abiding by your local protocol and staying within your scope of practice. So this is typically going to be decided by the provider at whatever facility you are transporting a patient from, but a typical adult dose could be 10 to 20 mil equivalents per hour, and a typical pediatric dose could be two to three mil equivalents per hour, and this is given IV or IO in both adults and pediatric. Some unfortunate adverse effects of a potassium infusion is extreme pain. I have heard it described as if your vein is on fire. It can be a very, very painful infusion. Some other adverse reactions can be shortness of breath and some EKG abnormalities. And just a quick side note, you want to make sure that these patients are hooked up to the cardiac monitor and just monitor for EKG disturbances. If our patient somehow does develop hyperkalemia, meaning high level levels of potassium in the blood, there are some EKG disturbances that might rear their ugly head. 